Good evening, virtual visitors. My name is Shakia Gillette. I am the director of the African American History Initiative here at the Missouri Historical Society. Welcome to our program and thank you for joining us tonight. Before we get started, we'd like to thank our members, donors, and supporters of the Zoo Museum Tax District. Thank you. The history of women's activism in St. Louis began long before 1920, when Missouri ratified the 19th Amendment and gave some women the right to vote. Continuing our theme of celebrating enterprising women in our region, we are pleased to welcome the ladies of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated as our collaborators for tonight's program. We are proud to join them as they celebrate their centennial anniversary and highlight their historic contributions, both locally and nationally. Tonight's program will run for about 60 minutes, which includes a 20 minute uh, video presentation, a brief panel discussion and a 15 minute Q&A. For your convenience, you can submit questions through the Q&A button, which is at the bottom of your screen in your toolbar. And in order to streamline the process, we would prefer for you to wait until the end to ask your questions. Please know that we will do our very best to answer all of your questions, but we may not have time to get to all of them. So without further ado, at this time, I'm going to turn the floor over to Kimberly Beck, the president of the Gamma Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Thank you so much, Shakia. It is my honor and a pleasure to serve as the Centennial President of Gamma Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and to partner with the Missouri History Museum in sharing the story, I like to say, her story, uh, you know, the little twist on history, her story, Gamma Omega's story here in the St. Louis community. I think the people will be surprised when they see all that Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated Gamma Omega Chapter has done to contribute to the growth and expansion of St. Louis and what we have done in partnership. And I am so excited because we grew from six women just after the pandemic, so very, very relative to what we're going through right now. It was 1920, they were just getting over the pandemic. And guess what? They said, we need a sisterhood that provides service here to the St. Louis community. And we have grown from those six members to 395 members. And I am just excited to share this information with your subscribers and the rest of the community. I hope it will help them get to know us better as our international president has set a standard for us to exemplify excellence through sustainable service. And in so doing, we will fulfill our sorority's mission to be of service to all mankind. Ultimately, that's what we are. We are a service organization and it's done by women sisters who love each other and support each other and share their talents and resources. Uh, one of the things I'm proudest of is that Gamma Omega Chapters members are committed to service. We have engineers, entrepreneurs, educators, executive directors, authors, musicians, name a career field. We have it in our chapter and they willingly offer up their talents and skills to share with the community, to help uh, cultivate and, and encourage high scholastic achievement, to help us eradicate issues for girls and women, to improve their social stature. And we don't just focus on women, but we do know that as you bless a woman, you bless the whole family because you got moms and sisters and aunts and grandmas. So we know that it is so important to lift them up and increase their social stature. And so what you'll see tonight in the presentation is how Gamma Omega grew here in St. Louis and just a snippet of what we have contributed to the St. Louis community. As we prepared this presentation, 
we felt, you know, a, a little bit down because we couldn't include all of our partners and everything that we've done. I mean, there's so much. It would be a lot longer than a 20 minute video, but we hope that you will enjoy <laughs> what we've put together so far. And this is the kickoff to our centennial celebration tomorrow we will be 100 years old and we couldn't be more excited to kick off our centennial celebration than with sharing it here with the St. Louis Missouri History Museum. So without further ado, I'd like for us to go ahead and start the video. N A K A N A K A N A K A N A K A and I finally became N A K A twenty pearls, twenty pearls represent. The Alpha Girl And I'm proud to tell the world I got my pearls Alpha Kappa Alpha was founded Wednesday, January 15, 1908 on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C., led by Ethel Hedgeman, a St. Louis native and a Charles Sumner High School graduate. To ensure perpetuity, sorority member Nellie Quander spearheaded efforts to incorporate and expand the sorority in 1913. And in 1920, Alpha Kappa Alpha came to St. Louis. Gamma Omega, originally named Mu Graduate Chapter, was chartered on December 2nd, 1920. This year, the chapter proudly celebrates its 100th anniversary. Its original membership, consisting of 12 college graduates working in St. Louis, wasted no time in providing service to the community. They brought with them a wealth of talent and experiences. Some had studied abroad before returning to St. Louis. One was among the first Black women in the United States to earn a degree in agriculture. Another was a social worker, and yet another was fluent in French and Spanish and had taught in Puerto Rico before returning to join the Sumner High School faculty. Today, the membership has grown to nearly 400 members. 53 innovative and resourceful women have led Gamma Omega with enthusiasm, grace, poise, confidence, loyalty, and a sisterly spirit. celebrate 100 years of an influential and salient presence in the St. Louis community, we are proud of our past and present presidents.
and it is my honor and pleasure to serve as the 53rd president of the Gamma Omega chapter in this our centennial year. Gamma Omega has a legacy of sisterhood operations and service built on excellence. As a sisterhood, we have grown from six charter members to 394 talented and dedicated members. In operations, we receive annual recognition for meeting and exceeding sorority standards and effectively executing sorority initiatives. In service, we are able to impact the St. Louis community and beyond through our philanthropic arm, the Ivy Alliance Foundation. From our beginning, we have provided scholarships and programs, and this year was no exception. Despite the pandemic, we were able to provide over $100,000 in scholarships and over 100 acts of service. What we do is possible because of our long-standing partnerships and collaborations in the community. Thank you to our contributors and supporters for your investment in our efforts. It is because of you that Gamma Omega remains set on success and ready for service to all mankind for another century. The chapter continues to fulfill its 2019-2020 motto by exemplifying excellence through sustainable service. Establishing partnerships and collaborations with community organizations has been a primary focus of Gamma Omega Chapter. In 1921, the chapter began developing service projects for girls attending Sumner High School by promoting academic achievement. That spring, two scholarships were awarded, one to a Sumner High School female graduate and the other to a second year female student attending Sumner Normal School. In 1928, Gamma Omega sponsored the famous contralto Marian Anderson in concert. Proceeds from the event helped support the chapter scholarship fund. Miss Anderson later became an honorary member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. In 1929, the chapter hosted the Sororities National Conference in St. Louis. Events were held at two Black-owned establishments, Poro College and the People's Finance Building. During the 1930s, cultural events were hosted, featuring renowned Black artists, including a concert vocalist, a concert pianist from the Boston Symphony Orchestra, and a ballet dancer and founder of the Studio of Classical Dance located in Washington, D.C. In 1932, Gamma Omega sponsored the chartering of Beta Delta, an undergraduate chapter at Stowe Teachers College. Seven charter members were initiated. In 1934, the chapter's collaboration extended to the Mississippi Delta with the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sororities Summer School for Rural Teachers Project. In the early 1940s, the chapter launched a citywide better behavior campaign in conjunction with the St. Louis Public Schools, the Urban League, and the Argus newspaper. The campaign promoted good conduct and improved race relations throughout the community. Gamma Omega's motto, Respectful Attitudes, was endorsed by public service agencies and displayed on buses and streetcars throughout the city. In the early to mid-1950s, Gamma Omega forged ahead with health-related community service projects supporting sickle cell disease research conducted at Homer G. Phillips Hospital, partnering with the Tuberculosis Society of St. Louis and the Speakers Bureau of St. Louis Medical Society, and teaming with the St. Louis Society of Crippled Children to assist with their Easter Seals campaign. Gamma Omega's Benefit Ball was one of its major scholarship fundraising events. It began in 1955 and lasted for more than four decades. It was indeed a fun-filled affair enjoyed by its members and the community.
The 1960s marked a decade filled with efforts to draw attention to unfair employment practices and other injustices directed towards Blacks. This decade sparked a new level of chapter involvement, which required lobbying for a St. Louis City natural disaster plan, marching for civil rights causes, and actively participating in voter registration drives. In 1963, Gamma Omega took an active part in the Jefferson Bank and Trust Company protests in downtown St. Louis to demand jobs for Blacks. Within a two-week period, members raised more than $10,000, which established the Gamma Omega Defense Fund used to assist jailed demonstrators with bail and court costs. Many hours of strategic planning took place in order to successfully organize critical support. In 1965, two Gamma Omega presidents traveled to participate in the historic Selma to Montgomery March. The chapter also became a recognized investor in the Southern Christian Leadership Conference's freedom struggle in the South. Marion Olam, who was a member of our chapter, was one of the Jefferson Bank demonstrators who was arrested. And her husband came to us and asked us to help. And we started a finance for all of the Jefferson Bank demonstrators. And when they were checked out, we paid their court costs. And I will always remember that, and so will the city of St. Louis, because we collected money from all of the sororities and fraternities, churches, and other organizations who got on the radio. People would walk up to us on the street and give us a dollar or two. And Alpha Kappa Alpha was known all over the city of St. Louis for its work in the civil rights movement. We marched, we met at my house nightly for two weeks and raised $11,000. Two weeks. We go to the bank every night and make a deposit to our Alpha Kappa Alpha Defense Fund. And so that's the thing that I remember most. And we became famous in the city of St. Louis for our work. celebration of its 50th anniversary, the chapter collaborated with the St. Louis Art Museum to host the first solo exhibition featuring a Black artist. The collection of photographic works by Moneta Sleet Jr. was presented for the St. Louis community. Mr. Sleet is noted for his photograph of Coretta Scott King at the funeral of her husband, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The 1970s also marked the beginning of the chapter's focus on literacy. The first project established was the Gamma Omega Reading Project. It was developed through a partnership with the Literacy Council of Greater St. Louis. During the 1980s, Gamma Omega began a partnership with the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, FIDA, that has continued for over 35 years. Members were trained and certified to serve as tax preparers at designated sites. The chapter signature program, Fashionetta, had its beginning in 1985 and has continued for 36 years. In 2011, the Fashionetta Cotillion was featured in the New York Magazine. In support of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority National Program, Gamma Omega bridged connections with African cultures through Africa. The chapter was recognized for its support of the African Village Development Program by the President of Africa. 
Partnerships with St. Mary's Hospital resulted in opportunities for seniors in their golden years and their caretakers to receive vital information for healthy living. Gamma Omega annually supported a bowlathon for big brothers and big sisters of Metropolitan St. Louis. To support the global community, chapter members collected over 12,888 pairs of shoes for the Shoe Man Water Project. Help empower women, the chapter teamed efforts with CARE, Cooperative for Assistance and Relief Everywhere programs. A Salute to Veterans Sunday Supper was organized and presented in cooperation with members of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated to kick off the MLK Junior Day of Celebration. Local veterans and their families witnessed a military salute ceremony, received valuable information from organizations, and enjoyed a special dinner. In recognition of breast cancer awareness, chapter members participated in the inaugural Sister Strut Breast Cancer Walk. Environmental stewardship took an interesting direction. 2015 initiates were instrumental in securing chapter affiliation with the Missouri Department of Transportation Adopt a Highway Litter Cleanup Program. Support for the Little Dresses for Africa, a nonprofit international project, resulted in members making over 300 pillowcase dresses to be sent to African villages. The chapter hosted community resource fairs to provide information from a variety of local agencies offering support and assistance to those in need. To help empower women, the chapter implemented a program to support women's safe houses in the community. Members presented workshops and experiences for middle school girls to encourage high scholastic achievements. The ASCEND program was implemented in area high schools to educate students on how public policy is created. The Weekend Wine Down, a Missouri winery bus tour, was organized to support the National Sororities Educational Advancement Foundation Scholarship Fund. The chapter instituted programs to support its 2018 to 2022 International Sororities Signature Program, HBCU for Life, a call to action. HBCU workshops were presented to area high school students, scholarships presented, and HBCU fairs held. During the pandemic, workshops were presented virtually, college admissions process, and HBCU panel discussions. Emma Omega honored its HBCU alumni as outstanding figures. We are proud to announce that the Fashion at a Cotillion, which was done virtually, was a huge success. More than $80,000 was awarded in scholarships to Fashion at a debutantes and escorts. Staffing is an integral part of the culture of historically Black Greek lettered organizations, specifically Alpha Kappa Alpha. Gamma Omega has incorporated staffing into our programs for decades. As we compete and win competitions, we are able to raise money that benefits our scholarship programs. Additionally, we often find ways to incorporate our sorority's national targets. In 2016, our theme was Think HBCU, where we highlighted the HBCU experience. Watch as members perform our variation of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Signature Step, Serious Matter.
an upscale event presented by Gamma Omega Chapter and the Epsilon Lambda Chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Talented designers presented their fashions on the first experience runway amid the backdrop of the beautiful ambiance of the Carmel Room. Guests were treated to food, music, vendors, prizes, and a cigar lounge. Proceeds from the event went to support gun violence prevention efforts in St. Louis. Contributions were made to Sumner High School, Sankofa Unity Center, and the St. Louis Coalition for Peace. Omega's 100 years, the strength of Gamma Omega has been rooted in the diversity of its members. The women, ranging in age from 75-year members to recent college graduates, represent a variety of talents, professional disciplines, interests, skills, and experiences. Members complement each other's strengths allowing for the implementation of a myriad of strategies to build a strong, viable future for our humanity. Wonderful. Thank you. So that's just a little bit of our history. Like I said, it was hard to put everything into those few minutes but <laughs> and hopefully there are some questions out there because i have some awesome panelists with me i'd like to introduce to you the members of the chapter that i have here with me first our vice president and chairman of our programs lanita blackman and our 51st president and also the general chairman of our centennial celebration, Ms. Coretta Bozeman, and our one of our chief historians, <laughs> Ms. Yeah. Frederica Coleman, who knows all things Gamma Omega chapter. <laughs> so these panelists will help me tonight with um, answering questions. Before we do that, I just want to give a, a word of acknowledgement to DeAndrea Blaylock Johnson, who was the narrator mm -hmm. of that video, who put it yes. together. She is uh, the chairman of our archives committee, and she just did an incredible job. I want to thank her. I also want to acknowledge that in this video is one of our very, very special uh, members, and that is Janetta Randolph Haley. Mm -hmm. She was uh, a, a regional director, our 17th uh, central regional director, and she was also, uh, okay, I'm going to miss this now. She was president of our chapter, and I'm trying to remember, number, number, not 40. Uh, no, well, yeah, I'm going to tell you in two seconds. She was president yeah. of our chapter, then went on to be uh, 29. Not only the 29th. Um, president of our chapter, went on to be the Central Regional Director and our international parliamentarian. And she is still an active member in our chapter. And this year, she celebrated 75 years of service yes. in our sisterhood. So we are so wow. thankful to have her. As a chapter, we're just thankful for the rich history we have because we actually have three members that are 75 year members or more. And we have uh, 11 members who are 65 year members or more. So we just have a, a rich legacy. And even with our 50 year members and above, which Frederica is a part of, I think all together, when we have over 30 members who are 50 year members or, or above. And that is why Gamma Omega is so strong and so solid. It is because of the commitment of these ladies 
who uh, have held our chapter together for mm -hmm. all these years. So now uh, we open it up for questions because we hope there were some. We hope you saw some interesting things during that video. Yes, we actually, the questions are rolling in. Wow. So I am just going to rattle them off and ladies feel free to just jump <clears throat> in and answer the questions. So our okay. first questions uh, were all the charter members from St. Louis. And that comes from, oh, Miss Gina McClendon. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to let uh, Frederica answer that because she is our chief historian and she knows all about our charter members. So. Frederica? Oh, Miss Frederica, oh, you're, you're on, on mute. You're on mute. No, they were not all from St. Louis, but they came to St. Louis after graduating from college. Some were from St. Louis, but they came here seeking employment. And that's how um, we got mm -hmm. some here. Miss um, Frederica, I'd like to. Um, ask a continuation to that question. Could you tell us a little bit more about the charter members? Oh, the charter members, most of them were teachers, mm -hmm. but we had some who were very, one that was very fluent in Spanish and French. And before she came to St. Louis, she had taught in Puerto Rico. Uh, we had one who was a journalist and she worked for one of the newspapers. She later became uh, editor in chief of the Ivy Leaf, and she was that in that position twice, and that was Althea Merchant. Some taught in the high school, and some taught elementary school. Wonderful, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, we have another question uh, from Miss Vicki Edwards: Are there any family members currently in the chapter of the founders? Of the oh, charter, uh, members. charter members. Charter the members. Charter. Yes. Not that I recall. No. No. No? Okay. Okay, we have another question here. What plans does Gamma Omega Chapter have to do to remain at the forefront of service in St. Louis in 2021? in the midst of a global pandemic? Well, that's an excellent question. And mm -hmm. so first, let me say that uh, our international president, Dr. Glenda Baskin Glover, who is also the president of Tennessee State University, um, mm -hmm. because safety of our members and of the community is first and foremost, our service has moved virtual, but it does not mean we're not um, having an impact in our service. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did is we contributed to make sure that we could provide meals for first responders. Uh, we have provided information forums for uh, COVID testing uh, and pop-up sites in partnership with Athenia for members of the community, the African-American community at the time when they weren't getting tested very much mm -hmm. to get tested. We held town hall meetings with the county executive and members of the health department and other experts so that folks who know us and folks who we know can know the current information on what's going on with COVID. We adopt families for the holidays. Mm -hmm. We, uh, when I say we have not stopped, we still mentor not students virtually. <laughs> um, not only are we mentoring students, but we are making financial contributions towards mm -hmm. keeping students in school and college. So we've done scholarships. We're continuing to do scholarships. One of the big things that I'm most proud of, and I'm sure Lanita will speak to this shortly, but we are supporting entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We designate a business every month, a business or two every month, and we support the business and we encourage other community members to support the small businesses because we want our sp sm small businesses to be able to sustain during this pandemic. So mm -hmm. we are very intentional about spending our dollars with small businesses, particularly black businesses. And I, I, we are 
uh, providing support to caregivers. Uh, in addition to uh, supporting the arts, we were recently a sponsor for the Black Rep and their Harlem Renaissance program, uh, because we wanna make sure that when we come out of the pandemic in 2021, mm -hmm. that we're able to keep it moving. We know folks are gonna have needs, but we're gonna need mm -hmm. uh, relief in terms of the arts. We're going to uh, need small businesses in our community. So we're, we're getting in where we fit in. And one of the things I'm most proud of is we're not unrealistic. We don't think that we can do it all by ourselves. We have developed some very strong partnerships with other members of the Divine Nine, with mm -hmm. a Salvation Army, with St. Louis County Homeless Continuum of Care, with Better Family Life, with the Urban League, with uh, National Council of Negro Women, with NAACP, like name somebody. We are, uh, um, the, yeah, I'm just saying, name somebody. We are partners because we believe that if we bring multiple resources to the table, we can fill gaps, you know, and we can leverage our strengths together. So, you know, the United We Vote forums that we just held, we just held two um, weeks of United We Vote forums. We did with the League of Women Voters, with 95.5, which is now 96.3. Uh, we really got a lot of information out there to the community. That's how we're going to do it. That's how we've been doing it in 2020. But I'm going to let Lanita speak because 2021 is actually going to be her first year as president as December 31st, minds will be wrapping up, but we have a strategic plan and it's her ball to carry out. So Lanita. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, and I agree with most of the things that um, Ms. Beck stated in regards to 2021. We are looking forward to making sure that we are um, known in the St. Louis community. Um, and as she mentioned, um, if I could give a shameless plug for our 365 Black dollar spending. Um, so far, our members have recorded up to $360,000 spent for the year. Um, and in the month of December, we are supporting um, Gulf Shores Restaurant and Minchie's Frozen Yogurt, which are both located um, in Creek Core off of mm -hmm. Olive and 270. So if you get an opportunity, please visit them, um, purchase items from them or gift cards from them for future use. Mm -hmm. And let them know that uh, you heard about them from Gamma Omega Chapter, because we want them to know that we are sending um, customers their way. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, we have a few more questions rolling in. Thank you to our virtual visitors for participating in the Q&A. So the next question is, what role did Gamma Omega play during the civil rights movement, a time we should be revisiting now? Hmm. Hmm. There was a little bit of that in the video. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it spoke well to it. The Jefferson Bank um, collection that we did to make sure that the protesters were able to be quickly released from jail was probably one of the most significant things we did. But I think in the video, it also highlighted how we didn't just stay here in St. Louis. Right. We had members, members. that we mm -hmm. sent off to uh, the Selma March and and so civil rights has been important to us for a long time. Frederica may be able to add some more meat to that, but uh, Gamma Omega has always been in the forefront of civil rights, even you know uh, to today. That's why we uh, we educate folks. We want to uh, through our forums, and even though we're virtual, we're providing information because we believe knowledge is power. So mm -hmm. we always educate, advocate and encourage folks to decide, even if you don't vote like we do, you know, get out there and vote, exercise your right to vote. Uh, yeah, and we're nonpartisan. So we just want, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing what's good for all citizens, because our model is service to all mankind. Right. Back in 1938, uh, the national uh, sorority set up um, a lobbying in uh, officials in Washington, D.C. And we participated in that and we helped with that. 
the goal was to increase awareness and increase social, economic, and political e equality for all minority groups. And one of the aims was for each local chapter to sign up as many eligible voters possible. Mm -hmm. So they would be eligible to vote in the 1940 uh, presidential election. And we wanted uh, people to know, the community and the United States to know that African-Americans did have a voice and they were interested. Right. So we have yeah. done voter registration every yes. since. Right. And I know that we're, you know, the question was about the civil rights movement, but uh, back at the beginning of this presentation, we talked about women's suffrage and how in 1920, uh, some women in St. Louis were able to vote. Unfortunately, African American women were not among those ranks. Right. However, that did not deter the members of Gamma Omega chapter from educating. Uh, uh, women on how to take poll tests and, you know, coming up with money to pay poll tax and doing whatever needed to happen so that women could vote. So Gamma Omega has been a part of uh, doing that kind of advocacy from its earliest days, from the beginning, from 1920. Well, thank you, ladies. Okay, our next question. Does the chapter offer mentorship opportunities for one of our St. Louis Black Catholic high schools, Cardinal, Cardinal Ritter Prep High School? Absolutely. And uh, Lanita will probably speak to this again, but we have what's called a hashtag CAP program. It is our um, it is our international president's signature program, and I'll let Lanita explain what that is and how we uh, mentor young ladies through that and also through our Fashionetta program when they become seniors. Lanita, did she hear me? She can't hear me. Oh. She can't. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, my my internet was a little sketchy. What was the question? Right. So it was about uh, opportunities to mentor young women, and I was explaining that since you're the program chairman, I was going to let you tell about hashtag CAP, um, uh, our international president's signature program, and CAP stands for College Admissions Process. So. Uh, we want to make sure that all students are ready for college admissions. And then also through our Fashionetta program, which is an eight month program. And it's not just for young women, but definitely it focuses a lot on women. But sorry, Lanita, Lanita please share. Um, yes, yeah, so our hashtag CAP um, program is a signature program. And we are working with <clears throat> high school students, um, junior and senior level, but we also accept freshmen and sophomore who are looking to learn more about the college process because even still today in 2020, we have several students who are still first generation students and their parents have not had the opportunity to go to college. So um, we help them with writing essays, with completing their application, showing them how they can get scholarships um, for these colleges that they're interested in. We also have the HBCU for Life, which if students are interested um, in attending an HBCU, we are here to support that, although they can go to school anywhere they would like. <laughs> but um, as you know, there are over 100 HBCUs still in existence. And so we are trying to also encourage those students to attend there as well. Um, as you mentioned with our Fashionetta um, Debs, we are starting our new Fashionetta program for 2021. And so we are going to be working with those students as well. They have a scholarship presentation this weekend um, because we want to help them to obtain their goals and come back and bring back everything that they've learned um, back to those students who will be coming back through the process again. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. We have a litany of questions. So <laughs> I am going to try to pull some of these together. Um, let's see. So this question is with all the racial tension in our area at the moment, is there a plan to continue activism to ensure social justice for our people? 
Yes, so our international um, program for advocacy is called Connection, and we're very active and engaged in that. And one of the things I mentioned before is we're nonpartisan, so we look at uh, improving life for all, but we know by improving life for uh, those who are most disenfranchised, we do improve life for all. And one of the things that we were um, advocating about was that, you know, that proposition that passed that was not supposed to, that proposition three uh, about the, you know, the, uh, the voting. So, yeah, so we're, we're going to continue to educate and do what we need to do to make sure people don't have their vote disenfranchised. I think one of the strongest programs we have is the support of entrepreneurs. It's so important. Uh, well, actually, it's um, what is the uh, our economic legacy? I just had a 50s moment. Mm, securing our economic legacy. So it's not just entrepreneurship, but we educate people on their credit. Correct, Juanita? Help me with this um, target three, building our economic legacy. It's credit, it's entrepreneurship, it's lots of other things related to finances. And those are the things we think we need to do to help secure the future of those who have been disenfranchised. But we will never stop advocating, educating, registering people to vote. That's what we do. And we have a very strong leader in that capacity. I, I, I must give a shout out to Joan Hubbard, who um, has just done a phenomenal job as our connection chair and also to uh, Melanie Davis, who was a subcommittee chair for our United We Vote uh, forum. So we will continue in the future to um, advocate on issues that are relevant to us. One of which this year was the violence. So mm -hmm. we made contributions to organizations mm -hmm. that are supporting nonviolence efforts we help to fund the Sumner High School Peace Garden because we need to start with the youth and help them to understand that there are ways other than violence to resolve issues. So we will always be working in that capacity. Okay, thank you. So I am going to combine two questions here. Okay, and the questions are, um, this is for all of the ladies on the panel. What has been the most fulfilling initiative that you have been involved with as a woman of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated? And part two to that question is, what do you like most about being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha? So can we let Frederica go first since she's been a member the longest? Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I enjoy working on the initiative with uh, Fashionetta. I've worked with Fashionetta for years. I um, help write the bios. I help the students with their bios. I usually write the script for the Fashionetta mm -hmm. program. And I have really enjoyed that. I also served as the chairperson for archives. And out of that, we wrote our history book. So I was very pleased. It took a number of years to do, but we did complete it. And we were very proud, uh, at least I'm very proud of the project uh, and the finished product. Also, I work with HBCU and that's a very fulfilling program because we do a lot mm -hmm. with the students as uh, it has been stated earlier, how we help to prepare them for college and we have different um, programs now that are virtual. So we, that has not stopped us. We have even get, given virtual tours for the students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Melanie Davis was uh, very instrumental in doing that, but it's a very fulfilling program. Okay, and I think our next senior is our 51st president, Coretta Bozeman. So, and, and um, that's a very difficult loaded question because I have, I've been a, a member of Gamma Omega since, for 30 years. I served as president um, from 2015 to 2016. So you, you love everything that you do. 
Um, so I, but I'm going to say, I'm going to have to go with two. One, my first one was uh, scholarship. So I served as a chairman of scholarship uh, in 93, 93, 94. And it was so rewarding just to read the essays and listen to the students and be part of, um, as, as uh, Ms. Blackman mentioned, many of the students are first generation college students. So just listening to their stories and their, um, and their testimonials. Uh, the second one, uh, you saw it in the video, Little Dresses for Africa. We um, set a goal for, uh, I think it was 150 dresses. We were gonna make 150 dresses out of pillowcases. And we, uh, it was an international program. And so they came back and said, you're a chapter size over 300, you need to make one per uh, member. And I said, whoa. And so <laughs> we turned that into a uh, party, like events where we would come together and you saw in the picture, come together and sew. Now I can't sew, but I would go and take things to people and do whatever. So it was just really exciting. And so what do I like most about being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha? Oh my goodness, I have sisters. I have uh, five biological sisters. Um, but I, when I became a member of Beta Delta chapter and now Gamma Omega chapter, I've just inherited so many more. And so even though we may not all agree, um, just like my biological sisters, I was telling somebody the other day, now I may fuss and fight and talk to my sisters, but you better not mess with my sister. <laughs> you better not. And that's how I feel about my sisters in Gamma Omega and Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. I love my sisters and you better not mess with them. <laughs> Yes, and now we will have Lanita Blackman, who is all, she is a Silver Star, tw over 25 year member, and go ahead. Yes, I, I actually, my um, anniversary is actually on Saturday, I'll be 27 <laughs> years young Yay! in the sorority. <laughs> Um, my, I'll pick two as well. Um, one was one of the first um, activities that I joined when I joined Gamma Omega was the um, PIMS committee, which is partnership in math and science, um, having a science um, background. It was fulfilling to meet with the middle school and high school kids um, who were interested in math and science, because we know that some of our students of color also struggle in that area. And being a, um, a person of color who works in that field, I wanted them to see that there are people like them who do work in those areas. And then the other one, um, which I've done twice, um, the first time for four years, the second time for two, um, was to be a graduate advisor to Beta Delta chapter, which is our cha um, citywide chapter that we sponsor. Um, it's 11 schools here in the St. Louis area. And as mentioned in the video, uh, Beta Delta was founded in uh, or chartered in 1932. So um, working with those college age women um, sometimes can give you a few gray hairs you might see in here, but um, it's it it's um, some of them young ladies that are now having children and mm -hmm. getting married, and it's really um, fantastic to see them grow up in the sorority and in life. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and so I so I am the baby in this group in terms of sorority life. I will be a 25 year member next year. So watch out, I'm just saying. So, you know, I don't have to, that was a very loaded question. I really don't have mm -hmm. to, but I will say, let me highlight a couple of things. First, the entrepreneur that, that participating in the, as the chairman of the non-traditional uh, non entrepreneur and just uh, feeding into those who have a dream and a desire to have their own business was mm -hmm. incredible. That our chapter was recognized nationally for that was just overwhelming for me. And that we uh, are strategic in making sure that the entrepreneur development process is a part of our fashionetta cotillion. So watching those high school seniors start to develop ideas for developing businesses and having their own. That's been very fulfilling mm -hmm. to me. 
all three of my daughters who are now uh, all soror, shout out to Brianna, Bianca, and Belicia, uh, who from their experience in that fashionetta, in fashion of cotillion as they came through and did the entrepreneurship, they developed their own business, BCB3. And so I know it works. I know it's real, it's work, it works. And so that has, you know, that was definitely one of the important ones. And as Lanita said, and I'm sure Coretta will say, <laughs> being a graduate advisor to the undergraduate Beta Delta chapter, it is it's phenomenal. It is phenomenal to see the, the dynamic women that I had an opportunity to work with. Mm -hmm. They are now dentists mm -hmm. and social workers and doctors and lawyers. And I mean, they are out there doing the thing. And I was like, well, I, you know, well, I remember her when, <laughs> when she was in the sophomore in college doing the serious matter step and, you know, and they stay connected to us. And mm -hmm. I'm a little bit different than most of the members here. I was initiated overseas in England. Mm. And so I know that we have truly an international sisterhood mm -hmm. because I have sisters overseas and I have anywhere I go in this United States, really in this world, there is a connection for me immediately. And I have experienced that as I traveled. One of my best friends when I was very young and moved over to, so membership, I said all that to say membership is very important, but mm -hmm. one of my dear, dear sisters and the soror who said, the member who said, yes, we're going to make this happen for you, uh, Jackie Terry, uh, Jackie and she, Jackie Terry, and she is, uh, she was a member in Japan and I was not, but, but Shortly after that, they had a chapter in Japan. I just happened to move on to Germany by the time they did. But membership is just incredible. So I would say membership and seeing how we've grown. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yeah. And I, I would like to say um, tomorrow on our actual uh, charter day, I will be 37 years in this sisterhood. So December 2nd, 1983. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. And you know, we're not the only ones this year who yes. are celebrating a centennial. And I'm going to let Coretta tell you a little bit about how uh, significant Missouri is in yes. 1920. So mm -hmm. Coretta, if you'll share a little bit about our sisters here in Missouri. So uh, we are the third oldest chapter in our sisterhood. So our anniversary is December 2nd. Uh, 1920. But what is so interesting about Missouri is that there are two chapters. So Beta Omega in Kansas City actually had their 100th centennial anniversary on October 20th, uh, 2020. So Missouri has two Alpha Kappa Alpha chapters that are in the Centennial Club. So yeah. that is, I mean, that is actually history in and, in and of itself, because it'll be a while before two chapters, I mean, you know, it, it will be a while. The next chapter, um, it was an, uh, chartered in 2021. So there are several others coming later, but right now, Missouri has, there are only three chapters in the sisterhood that are 100, and Missouri has two of them. And we had an activity together and we were gonna have, went pre-COVID, it was gonna be called Meet Me in the Middle. <laughs> so post-COVID, it was called, it was a virtual uh, I-70 happy hour. So- oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, so we did an, a sisterhood activity together that was just so much fun. So when we say we enjoy each other, uh, not just our chapter, and there are five chapters in the metropolitan area. We work together, we do service together. We are Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and we have chapters, and Gamma Omega chapter happens to be turning 100 tomorrow. 
Yes, well, yes, yes, yes. And we're not, so we're the second and third oldest graduate chapters. Our sorority yes. is actually 112 yes. years old. So there are some chapters that are older than us, but we're the second and third oldest graduate right. chapters because once our, and we mentioned Nellie Quander in there, once she decided to incorporate um, graduate chapters started to form and it wasn't just members who were located on college campuses, mm -hmm. but then we started to spread around uh, the country. So, yeah, and uh, we're just, you know, we love our sisterhood. Anybody that knows Kimberly Beck knows I love Alpha Kappa Alpha. And I think it's because we have an opportunity to just love on each other, to support mm -hmm. each other. Iron sharpens irons. We have a desire to see each one another achieve. And that's important. I, mm -hmm. I think you need always to have a group of cheerleaders around you. I know that the members of Gamma Omega and beyond only want the best for me. And that, mm -hmm. that's incredible to say I have 395 and I really have more than that because I have to tell you, I got to give acknowledgement to the other uh Six chapters here in the St. Louis metropolitan area, they truly are our partners. Um, from Delta Delta Omega over in East St. Louis, mm -hmm. the Omicron Theta Omega here in St. Louis, and Omicron Eta Omega, and Upsilon Phi Omega, and Beta Delta, our undergraduate chapter, and Epsilon Iota, all of those chapters and all of their members have been extremely supportive of everything we do. We support each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that's what I'll say. There, there wouldn't, there's no competition. We just support each other. So I, I love it. If you're asking, why do I like being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha? Mm -hmm. I, that, that's why I love it. Well, ladies, this was a phenomenal <laughs> discussion. I hate to wrap it up and I see so many questions that we were unable to get to. And I'm so sorry that we did not get to answer all of the questions, but there was one that kind of piqued my interest. That's not really a question, it's a comment. Um, have you considered compiling a list of the black companies that your members are supporting and sharing it with the public so that others can pat patronize mm -hmm. these organizations as well? That is such a great question. And I'm glad you asked because on our website, we are going to have a list of all of the uh, small businesses that we've been supporting so that you can visit our website and get some of those businesses. And if you have a small business, it, particularly a small uh, business that is black owned that you would like us to uh, promote and support, please visit www.akagostl and send us a message and we will make sure that that information gets out there because mm -hmm. we want to keep folks uh, surviving and thriving uh, post pandemic. So yes, we will be doing that. Well, ladies, I really hate to end it because this was a wonderful conversation and I'm just so thankful that everything came together and we were able to mm. showcase all of your talents, everything that you do in the community. So I just wanna commend you and on behalf of the Missouri Historical Society, thank you so much for partnering with us. And thank you to all of our virtual visitors that joined us this evening. Um, if you are interested in supporting MHS through a membership, we'd be so grateful to have your support. I am going to paste a link in the chat box and please feel free to look up all of our information about upcoming programs that we may have in the future. We have another program coming this upcoming Friday that will start at 630. Um, where we bring in our sister cities from Baltimore and Kansas City to talk about some of the topics that um, we are experiencing during this pandemic. So please check us out on our website and learn more information about that program. And we hope to see you very soon. Thank you all for coming. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. You too. Thank you so much for all you did to make this happen for us. We oh, cannot no thank problem. you enough. No Truly, problem. you it are our pleasure. sister and
We are Much sister Greeks. Yes, yes, we are. We absolutely, we absolutely are. are. We, we absolutely uplift are. black women. So this absolutely. is what we do. Absolutely. And thank you to these awesome panelists. Great job. Great job. Great job. Yes. Wonderful thank job. You. Yes. Yes. Hi, Miss Melanie. <laughs> is Miss Melanie on? Is she yes. On? She's in the oh. chat. Yes. Miss Melanie. Hi. Oh, you can see. We love see? each other. Right. I had my glasses on so I couldn't read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and ladies, if you see any of the questions in the chat box, please feel free to grab those questions and maybe post them oh, on your website. Tell me how to do that because I would love to be able to do that and post them on our Facebook page. Okay, I can like, do that. You know, I'll if there were, away. yeah. Okay, yeah, great. We'll do that. Okay, and I am going to end our program. So thank okay. you, ladies. And Miss Coretta, is today your birthday? No, tomorrow is my anniversary. Her anniversary. Okay. Thirty-seven mm -hmm. years. I was gonna sing to you. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's March fourth. I'm March third. Oh my goodness! See, <laughs> I know. All right. Good night, oh, ladies. Lanita. Good night, Lanita. Lanita. Lanita.